Welcome. In this video, we're going to talk about the native red squirrel and the evasive grey squirrel. Red squirrels are endangered in the UK, and the grey squirrel transmits a disease called a pox virus to the red population. It often kills the reds, and the greys are usually left unarmed. Since the arrival of the grey squirrel in the 1870s as ornamental pets, populations of the reds have dropped from about 3.5 million down to about 120 to 160,000 individuals in the UK. This number is reducing all the time and the grey population is rising. The grey and red squirrels compete for habitat. The red squirrels like broadleaf woodland and conifer forests but they're limited to conifer forests, which isn't the best suiting environment for them. They prefer broadleaf environments. The grey squirrels defend the territory and use up all the resources in these woodlands. The grey squirrel pressure will often stop the reds from breeding, and it's another huge factor in their decline and the loss of habitat. Red squirrels are naturally woodland dwelling seed eaters to do deciduous woodland. Now they're always competing against the grey squirrel. The grey squirrel is a more bigger animal, more aggressive, and with larger populations, it's quite easy for them to scare red squirrels from a territory, bully them from away from food, and use up all the natural resources. During the late summer and autumn months, it's a critical time for reds to be feeding on their autumn bounty so they can store fat reserves for the winter. The grey squirrels maximise this opportunity, eat up all the feed in the local area. This also has an adverse effect on the red squirrels preparing to put enough weight on to breed early the next year. The red squirrel will have two breeding patterns throughout the year. First will start in December through to around about February. And the second will start in June, going through into about August. This is why it's critical during the autumn and early winter months that they put on weight. They compete with grey squirrels in coniferous woodland or deciduous woodland. They're not going to have that opportunity to be in prime condition to bring up any kits throughout these months. Generally, the red squirrel will have between two and four kittens for each brood. They need to be in prime condition, have abundant food sources to be able to raise these kittens and hopefully they'll go on to reproduce and expand red squirrel's population levels. From records began, from 1945 through to 2010 in this image, it shows you how grey squirrel's territory has expanded. We're now in 2022, you can imagine the grey squirrel has enhanced its territory even further. It's vital if we want to see red squirrels in the UK landscape, that some form of control is applied to control the grey squirrel. There's a lot of uneducated people in the UK that don't know much about the countryside and the harm that these grey squirrels do. Other than competing for food, damaging forestry, costing millions of pounds a year to the forestry industry in the UK, killing native trees. People have a misconception that they're great pets in the garden. This is the reality of what happens to our native red squirrel. These images show images of squirrel pox. Now squirrel pox usually causes blisters, which turns to infection, which will then in turn kill the red squirrel. Otherwise it can temporarily blind them, makes them uh, susceptible to predators, and also likelihood is they'll starve to death. From contracting the disease, it usually takes about 10 days to develop symptoms. 
and it's more or less 100% fatality rate. Now, wouldn't you like to see red squirrels in your garden like this? The only way to do that is to control the grey squirrel. It's unfortunate for the grey squirrel. It's not at fault. But we are at fault, and we are custodians at UK countryside. And you should mis make your mistakes right and address them issues. No red squirrels have been known to develop immunity to squirrel pox virus. As I mentioned before, within four to six days, it's usually 100% fatal. Squirrels, in whatever form, are undeniably beautiful animals. There's a place in every habitat, in every part of the world, for the right species. Forget the cuddliness, forget the cuteness, and concentrate on what's important for the native species that have always lived on these shores. Now there is a saving grace. The reintroduction of the pine martin in the UK in certain areas, and I know in Ireland it's been particularly successful. I'm hearing good reports that it's driving the greys out in big numbers. I do have my concerns about the introduction of the pine martin. I think it is working in terms of grey squirrels, but it's a long-term effect on the red squirrels and on other species that it could impact on in the future. Some people in the UK believe the grey squirrel and the red squirrel can live side by side. In their minds, it's natural selection. And if the grey squirrel outcompetes the red squirrel, then to them that's fine. There's a misconception that they can interbreed and create an hybrid that would be immune to the pox virus. They are two entirely different separate species, the grey squirrel and red squirrel. The genes are completely separate, completely different, and that wouldn't enable interbreeding between these two species. The life cycles, the breeding habits, the feeding patterns, the places that live in drays, are very similar. After all, they're both rodents, they both live in trees, both spend a lot of time on woodland floor, foraging, storing away food for the winter. This is an image of a red squirrel, tucked up in its dray, keeping nice and warm during the winter months. In recent times, I've been reading a lot about gene editing therapy to control the ingressive grey squirrel. This won't be ready for about another six to seven years, as far as what I'm hearing. But it doesn't sit right with me. Why should you alter the genes of a wild animal? If we start going down that road, I think it's a slippy slope. It could lead to all manner of things. I think there's more natural ways of doing this. More natural ways of controlling grey squirrel. And these approaches should be done first. Again, here's a pine martin. What we have to be careful of is this is an apex predator in our environment. There's nothing much to predate on the pine martin. And when the grey squirrels have gone, the red squirrels will definitely be on the menu. Now the other forms of control that I've been talking about that are tried and tested are trapping. Now this would have to be enlarged and done on a very large scale to make any inroads in grey squirrel population because they're very versatile critters and they can reproduce and refill the territory as fast as you can take them out of it. On surefire way of controlling them, and again, it'd have to be a massive drive on a nationwide front, is through the form of shooting, either with air rifles, firearms, or shotguns. It's an effective way, a humane way 
There's no fear of trapping the wrong species. There's no poison involved. So there's no secondary poisoning for any other species or animal. If it's done correctly, it's the right approach alongside trapping in the right environments and done to the right legislation and guidelines. One of the best ways of controlling squirrels is to use a feed station in a woodland. Once the squirrels find it, you'll be able to control them. If there is reds in the area, the reds will also visit that feeder and they'll get the benefits of the free food. So I'd ask everyone to have a serious think. Do your research, read up on this subject. Learn the understand and understand the importance of why the grey squirrel needs to be controlled. Put sentiment to one side, put emotions to one side and realise that our own native red squirrel is an endangered species. The populations are decreasing each year despite the efforts of most people and a lot of specialist red squirrel groups. What I will do in the description to this video is I'll put some links to some local, hopefully to you, red squirrel organisations. If you feel that you can support this endeavour, then please do. If you can support it like I do, by controlling grey squirrels, then continue your good work. Thanks for watching this video. Hope you found it useful. I'll see you next time.